Uh, good afternoon. We are here at ASH, and I have uh, Dr. Rafael Fonseca with me from the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona, where he is the Chief of Internal Medicine. And Dr. Fonseca has some interesting uh, uh, discussions to, to present today in terms of mechanism of action and how that is being um, looked at in the application of multiple myeloma and treatment. Sure. Well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, first of all. Um, at this ASH meeting, I had the opportunity of uh, chairing the scientific subcommittee on plasma cell neoplasias, um, you know, a long way of saying multiple myeloma science. And uh, uh, we had two speakers, uh, Dr. Larry Boyce from mm -hmm. uh, local here from Emory, and then Dr. Florian Wasserman from Munich, Germany. And uh, we called our session the yin and the yang of multiple myeloma. And um, what, what we mean by that is that you know, you can go um, about uh, treating cancer in a couple of ways. You could target the genomics of cancer. So the canonical example of this is CML. Mm -hmm. Beautiful treatment, beautiful story. You gotta have imatinib, the patients do very well, period. Now, let's call that the yin. The yang would be um, a different way of treating cancer in which you try to uh, capitalize on some vulnerabilities that cells will have that they have acquired as a consequence of their differentiation. So what I mean by that is you have a happy B cell and the B cell evolves and you know, a normal B cell it wants to become a normal plasma cell. And in the process of doing that, you know, it goes through certain steps of differentiation and maturation that will optimize it for what it's supposed to be, a, a, a protein factory, a professional protein producing cell of immunoglobulins. So it needs to become what I call aerodynamic for that purpose. But in doing so, it generates some vulnerabilities that could be used um, against it. And, and in fact, I would argue that has been the reason why we saw so much progress starting in the late 1990s and 2000 in the treatment about multiple myeloma because that was what was capitalized on. Now, I can't say that that was a before thought, so it's a little bit of we're learning afterwards, but sure. You know, the protosome inhibitors make sense. And protosome inhibitors, you know, you have cells that produce proteins, and if there's misfolded proteins, there's problems with the trafficking or the metabolism the cells will get stressed and the cells will die very quickly. What's somewhat new is IMIDs. So IMIDs actually appear to work through the same uh, mechanism. And uh, Dr. Basserman presented some of his work where he has shown an important uh, chaperone function for Cerebron, which is a, the target protein where IMIDs bind for MCT1 and uh, CD147, which are essential components on the plasma cell metabolism. It turns out one of them is, uh, is uh, a lactate exporter, so it does change a little bit of what happens in the intracellular milieu. Very, very interesting uh, results, and he has this in a Nature Medicine paper. Now, he also cited some work from uh, our lab, where, where one of my fellows, uh, Sinto Sebastian, actually did, uh, did some experiments, and he found that if, if you look at normal plasma cells, this, this gets really can be very interesting, if you look at normal plasma cells, Every time they produce a protein, the protein folds, there's a need of a disulfide bond, and that releases a tiny amount of hydrogen peroxide. But there's so many proteins that every cell produces somewhere between 100,000 and a million molecules per second of hydrogen peroxide. So if the cell doesn't have a good mechanism to dispose of that, it's gonna poison itself, right? So, so this is done through an enzyme called thyroidoxin, which is ubiquitous, all of our body has that, but it's particularly important there. But for thyroidoxin to work, it needs to kept, be kept whole by thyroidoxin reductase. It needs to be reduced. And what thyroidoxin does, it, it processes very quickly this hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. And what uh, was found is that IMIDs actually inhibit thyroidoxin reductase. So pretty much it's like tripping the plasma cells. So they produce hydrogen peroxide, the self poison, the signal CR stress, and the cells die. And, and this has a lot of implications because both the work of Dr. Basserman as well as ours would suggest that there's mechanisms for imid action that are different from what has been published in the science papers. It's what you know the scientists would call ubiquitin independent. Right. And I think it's a better explanation why these drugs work better with protosome inhibitors. Mm -hmm. And and you know it raises a lot of interesting questions that that same complex of thyroidoxin, thyroidoxin reductase. It's also the target of steroids. That's why steroids work. Actually, steroids induce a protein that's called TXNIP, which blocks that, so steroids also make plasma cells self-poison. And for that matter, I think that's why they work in lymphoma as well, to at least a big part of it. That's how they signal for apoptosis. But then there's other drugs that can block that pathway that are independent of Cerebron and potentially could be used as therapeutics for myeloma. 
and uh, so again, the ramifications are multiple. I think the point of that the, of our session was just to say that, you know, you have a cell that's really good at something. You know, it's like a, a tank will be really good at power, but not at speed. Right. And that's what happens with plasma cells. And what we would like to suggest is that, as you look across the board at other cancers, these principles could apply. They already do. You know, breast cancer and, and, and prostate cancer, they depend on hormones. So for some time, they can work. Horm hormonal inactivation can work, right? But, but one has to think about the cell of origin of multiple cancers because I am sure there's a catalog of vulnerabilities that we're not thinking about yet. Yeah, that's very interesting. You know, those, the, 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 the two classes of agents you're talking about have been sure. around for almost 20 years. And, sure. And we're only now really understanding you know, how they're, they, they, they work. We know they work and they work well and they've been exploited you know, for that, uh, that, that benefit. But to, to understand precision or precisely how they work, you know, at the molecular level, is very interesting. So. Yeah, no, I, th I think we're we're very, you know, very excited. And and I should have. I was pretty selfish. I think the yang includes many other things. You know, sure. microenvironment, immunotherapy, and all sorts of other things. But it's just to say that I think the Warren cancer is multi-pronged. We should keep going for the targeted approaches, precision medicine. But let's look at all other pathways yeah. at the same time. So, thanks for sharing. Appreciate the. Uh, Appreciate the lecture, that was a good one. <laughs> uh, my pleasure, thank you.